That's gotta be gold. Yeah, I wonder how old this cabin is. Okay, so here we go. It is day six of my trip. I have about 190 kilometers left to go to Taco Bar, which is the LZ landing zone on the Peel River and 177 kilometers left of the Bonnet Plume. Um, so to finish the Bonnet Plume, I have about 40 clicks I have to do per day, but I'm feeling pretty good about that considering the current's strong and I don't think there's any portages in front of me. I might hike up this creek a little bit. There's a really cool canyon not too far up that way and uh, uh, pan for gold a little bit. Hopefully I can still bang off my 40k today if I do that. I just got my eye on the pot. Looks a tad precarious on top of the fire right there. This river, the Bonnet Plume, is um, rarely traveled. So there's no other groups in front of me. There's no other groups behind me. I may be one of the only people to do it this year, if not the only person, potentially. I don't know why, maybe it's just because of the portaging, but comparatively to a lot of trips I've done, it's not really all that bad. It's literally kind of amazing to think that I have this entire wilderness to myself, like I'm the only person out here for hundreds, if not thousands of square miles. What a place to have a coffee. My God, I just, I don't know which campsite's been the best. They've just all been incredible. This one's just great because it's open. That's actually, you know, you're camping right on actual dirt here. You get, get your pegs in easily. It's flat enough. But then yesterday was amazing. It wasn't broad open, but it was more intimate in the bush. Those mountains just came right up out of the other side of the river and there's just cliffs and huge peaks just right in your face. And then the one spot that was at the head of the rapid wasn't ideal. I got there late, but then I found that caribou antler and I saw a caribou there. Pretty cool. <laughs> Clearwater tributary and a decent enough eddy. I figured there'd be some fish here, but anyways, they're not biting. I took a few casts last night and no luck. Um, could be that the, the tributaries that are more fanned out like this, uh, there's less chance of uh, you know insects falling in them. The ones that just come straight out of the bush might be better, but I don't know. That's just a guess. So. Anything that sticks out really is just a place that's gonna be easy to uh, to dip my pan in and get a bunch of uh, the smaller sediment. Um, you know, I'm looking for like black sand as an indicator. Um, something like a, a deposit of black sand would be a good place to pan in and around. Um, 
tried a couple of spots already, uh, but nothing, nothing panned out. No luck yet. I don't have a ton of time and it's making me wonder if it's worth continuing up this creek much because I've already spent a good amount of time just kind of panning the lower part, but I think I'm still going to head for that canyon. Hey bear! Cutting through a little thicket here. Oh, there's an open channel. Hopefully this brings me out to a good spot. Beautiful in here though, this is awesome. I'm glad I just, just alone for the little trek is worth it. Explore some country off of the river. Wow. I think I see something in here, guys. I think I, I, think I might have got something. Look at that. That's gotta be gold. Like, it's got a weight to it. It's heavy. It looks pretty like banged up from being in the creek. It's not all smooth. Right at the bottom, I just sift the whole pan through and I just found a freaking gold nugget. <laughs> yeah! I'm gonna give this to my wife, Tori, when I get home. This is like the coolest souvenir ever from the Yukon, man. Totally worth putting myself way behind schedule on doing this hike today. And now I'm gonna have to try more. Well, that is going in a bag, in a bag, in my waterproof backpack in the safest possible place imaginable. Well, I just can't imagine a cooler feeling than that. Continuing to pan and to pan and to pan and nothing, 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 and just thinking like, oh, I'm just here fooling around. Like it's your total needle in a haystack. And then to just wash a whole bunch of sand and gravel and pebbles out of your tray and all of a sudden catch a glimpse of this shiny yellow metal in there and then actually have it be gold is just like, insane like i see the draw i see why people want to do this just to be out here experiencing this country and panning the creeks and finding gold like that is just the coolest thing ever like just these wild surroundings and i don't know man it's just i guess it's part of the legacy of the yukon but uh and and the west in general but like what an amazing experience so i'm probably going to try two or three more spots and then uh maybe head up the canyon a bit and then just pick my way back to uh, my canoe and head on my way. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to try another, uh, panning another creek before the trip's over, that's for sure. Well, back with my gear now. Better load my boat quickly and uh, get on the river, but super cool experience for sure. Just the hike and just uh, looking for spots and actually finding a little bit of gold is super, super neat, so. All right, finally pushing off now. Well into the afternoon, but what can I say? Gold fever got the best of me. And we're off. I'm going to call this campsite Solid Gold after a strip bar in Sudbury. Very interesting looking river with all the floodplains. Should be stopping to fish here. Wow, this is so epic. Right now I see what look like uh, sheep, one, two, three, four, up on the side of the mountain there. That's a neat, uh, neat thing to see so far away, but uh, definitely saw them moving, so dull sheep. They're, they grow big horns, just kind of like very similar to a big horn sheep, except they're white. Looks like just bits of ice still on it or something. 
Maybe it's not a spring. Maybe that's just ice remaining from the frozen creek from the snow runoff there. Anyways, I might stop at the mouth and fill my water bottles because I have no problem drinking that. Oh yeah, no, it's a waterfall. There's like a natural spring that's just bursting out of the side of the mountain. It looks like, you know, obviously at times it's fed with snow runoff too, but it just bursts out of the side of the mountain out of nowhere and then tumbles down this long skinny waterfall and then disappears into a pile of rocks. It's making me really thirsty just looking at it actually. lake um, and fish in it but I just don't have time I was thinking it was I was saying day six it's actually day seven which means just to make it to the mouth I have 45 kilometers a day to paddle every day not counting the 15 to 20 I have to do on the peel to make it to my pickup location so yeah I definitely don't have time to hike into this lake Well, fun little fly fishing stop there at Fairchild Creek. It comes out of Fairchild Lake anyways, which is a, a large uh, lake just in the bush here. Mountains on either side. I wanted to go in there, but just doing a little math, I have to make it about 47 kilometers a day if I make it another 12K today. I have 47 just to finish the bonnet plume, not even counting the peel. So unfortunately, now I think that's doable. I just gotta get on the river earlier. If there's no more portages in swift current like this, it's doable. It just means I don't have time to hike, you know, over a mile into another lake and fish there for a couple hours, you know? Oh, cool. An old cabin. Whoa. I gotta pull over and stop and see that. I wonder if that's old man Fairchild's cabin. Uh, now I gotta stop and see the cabin. God, I'm never gonna get anywhere. Uh. Looks like the uh, roof still doesn't leak too much logs are squared on the inside here and you can really see the the moss and uh, some interesting literature to uh, some thumb through here a little scotch the good thing about uh, small cabins is it doesn't take much to heat and you can see this is a relatively small wood stove a top loader yeah I wonder how old this cabin is it's used for trapping or prospecting or hunting cabin or well that was really cool 
Just uh, fly fishing there at Fairchild Creek and then out of the corner of my eye, saw this awesome rustic old log cabin with a moss roof and uh, found what is likely a trail into Fairchild. It's too bad that uh, I didn't have more time to spend here because uh, I would have definitely trekked into that big beautiful lake just back in the bush this way but uh, still got to bang off 12k and it's like quarter to eight and uh, a couple big days coming up tomorrow too so probably for the best that uh, probably for the best that I'm going to uh, take a little more easy today. Looks like some clear water in that branch. That would have been the spot to fish. Damn. But then I never would have saw the cabin, so all good. Pulling up to a potential campsite on a tributary with a beautiful pointy top mountain across the river. I'm off my map, so if I continue on, I'm gonna have to switch the maps over anyway. But... We got some beautiful surroundings here in a nice clear water creek. So not a bad spot for a campsite, but it's a little low lying and sandy. You can tell most of it, at least the lower part, has uh, wasn't long ago when it was underwater. So not ideal, but it's flat and I didn't roll into camp until like 10 o'clock. So I'll take it. Looks like the weather's changing. There's some storm clouds rolling in. So I'm going to get my tent up quick. I think it's going to be a can of soup night. I brought a big can of um, pea soup that I might heat up and go to bed so I don't get to bed at like 2 in the morning getting to camp so late. And then that way I'll be able to get an earlier start because I really got to make some distance tomorrow. Maybe we should have staked it down first. keeps blowing up my fire. We need some sort of wind break because I don't really have any tinder and the wind just kept blowing out uh, the flame before it could get started. Amazingly it's just raining all around me like literally except on top of that now like pretty much raining all around me except on me so Pretty ballsy once again, not putting my tarp up, but no risk, no reward. That is one hell of a view, that mountain, man. So freaking cool. Really pushing my luck here, not setting a tarp up. Like it's raining like 50 meters away from me. seven today pretty epic freaking day traveled 40k after trekking up a Russian Creek into the mountains and up to a canyon panning for gold found what I consider to be a gigantic gold nugget caught some Arctic grayling on the fly and uh, saw one dull sheep up pretty close and another four or so up in the mountains too and just took in endless amounts of beautiful country. I have um, 45k a day to do just to get to the peel and then probably about 20 clicks on the peel to my float plane pickup spot at Taco Bar. It's not going to be easy considering I didn't get to camp until about 10 and now it's probably after midnight. It's going to be hard to drag 
hops out of bed at 6 and 6 a.m. but it's got to happen and crawl into the tent and sleep hard You'll probably pass out in the first 10 seconds of lying down good morning it is day eight chilly one this morning. I got uh, everything in my tent packed up. <sighs> Actually like started doing things around 6.30 as opposed to 6 and uh, finally got out of the tent so not the jump up at 6 a.m. Uh, plan but uh, you know probably got roughly six hours sleep and uh it's cold this mountain is blocking the sun so i thought it was going to be overcast in the tent turns out it's not really not too many clouds in the sky at all so i'm hoping it's going to be a beautiful day just waiting for that sun to peek up behind the mountain and warm things up i gotta get a fire going here and get some coffee on looking really forward to the coffee and uh basically just jump on the river and uh, start paddling like crazy uh, but I gotta do a trek to get my food barrel every day I uh, ditch my food barrel about a hundred meters or more from camp so the bears won't get into it eat my food run out of my food and then eat me to wrap my head around the scale of everything out here. It's just so grand. Ah, oh, there's the sun back. This is a mixture of three peaches and cream and one apple cinnamon and it's delish. Mmm, two apple cinnamon. This is a five oatmeal morning, ladies and gentlemen. Sweet, delicious coffee. Anyways, yeah, day eight today um, is gonna be uh, a, like, I don't wanna call it a slog, but I'm gonna basically get in the canoe and paddle as far as I possibly can. That's the plan. So, you know, I'm sure I'll stop to fish at the odd eddy get out stretch my legs a couple times if that but it's going to be about making time because I'm behind time and I, I really should be banging off minimum 50 kilometers today so that's the plan who knows what adventures today will bring it'd be nice to see some more animals some more wildlife um, I wouldn't doubt if I saw something this whole area we went through is crazy probably one of the best rivers I've ever seen to see dull sheep which are usually so high so it's fairly rare to see them as close as I did yesterday I've seen tons of caribou prints and moose prints all over the place so hoping I see something today as I push towards the Peel River a little like lookout perch right there that's what caught my eye look at how beautiful this is though well it looks like someone's been here somewhat recently because there's a pump 
lying right next to the river there. That is a core sampling box. So someone's at least at one time was diamond drilling. Hey, a fish just jumped right there. They use that jet boat to access up and down the river. Oh, looks like someone's here. It's a water tower. Looks like this is an outfitter's camp. Well, it turns out I'm not the only man in this country. Uh, that plane I saw flying this morning is a Super Cub and they can take off and land almost anywhere on those uh, tires it had on it. And uh, it turns out uh, they landed somewhere down here and I just met three gentlemen that uh, booted it up to these cabins to uh, get things ready for dull sheep hunting season. They're a ram hunting outfitter and man did they pick a beautiful spot. So mostly Americans pay top dollar probably 20, 30,000 US a hunt to come in here, they camp out here, and then they get flown off in the Super Cub or access different areas with the jet boat and hike up into the sheep country and they hunt doll sheep, big doll sheep rams with the big curls. So uh, definitely high-end uh, activity, that's for sure. Anyways, just kind of the only real sign of any actual buildings or development other than that old moss top log cabin I saw is this um, ram hunting outfitter. So again, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm supposed to bang off 50K today, so I better get back on the river. Just heading into a massively braided section of the Bonnet Plume. Probably one of the most braided sections of river I've ever paddled and the map doesn't really show if which channel is the deepest one, I don't know. So um, I'm gonna just try to pick my way through and stay with whatever channel has the most current. But uh, it was almost a week ago where I was up portaging around the canyons and uh, you know the water goes down quickly every day so I'm worried maybe that some of the braids might be too shallow to get through and if I get into one of those braids and, I, and there's no more water I might have to walk or drag my boat a long way which would suck obviously which way to go I have no idea very confusing here we're gonna choose the channel that has the most water in it. it. Doesn't seem like any of them really do. But it's looking like I'm getting pushed to the left, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. Usually the outside uh, end of the river has the most current, the fastest current. One, two, three, four, five different potential ways here. I think I picked the right one though. Well, here's an interesting scenario. I don't know if I want to go right down this tiny channel. There could be sweepers in there. Oh, I could have gone through there. I feel like I've gone like triple the distance because I'm just going like this, following the braids in the river. down the wrong channel there. It's moving around some like permanent islands with trees on them. Um, I might pull over and just like try to whip a huge boulder on top of my spray jack in the bow to try to uh, to try to trim my boat more bow heavy that way the wind will point me into it. Ah, 
first cast. Yeah, so it's middle of the day, so they're not in, in the shallowest part of the eddy feeding. You gotta go for them a little deeper, but you can entice them to bite still. So that's dinner for tonight. Awesome. I love these fish. There's another one. Wow. That one's got some really nice colors. So I've been battling some pretty wicked headwinds now for quite some time and uh, every time the wind picks up or I take my hand off my paddle to get a drink of water or something it just blows up and spins me around so I'm using tons of energy just to try to keep my boat pointed straight you know I cruise past this uh, beautiful tributary with uh, one of the nicest back eddies and crystal clear water pouring out of it so I pulled over and uh, caught uh, a bunch of fish kept two real nice size really for dinner and um, I you know I don't really want to wade out the wind it's almost it's very challenging to paddle in it though and I might look for a boulder and maybe just even stick a boulder on top of my spray deck at the bow just to try to trim me at least even or ideally a little bow heavy so that wind uh, won't try to spin me and point my bow back up river or actually keep me kind of pointed into the wind um, because right now paddling into the wind stern heavy the wind's just trying to weather vane me and blow the lightest point of my boat up river and uh, it's just quite a challenge it's no more nice easy downhill cruising which is too bad because i've made it 20 clicks out of the 50 that i want to do today and it's already about three in the afternoon so it looks like best case scenario i'm going to be pushing well into the night again and, and not making camp till nine or ten which is crazy but got to do what you got to do all right well that was a prolonged pit stop but uh, I was getting killed by this headwind and it was one of the best little looking fishing holes yet so I had to uh, fish there a bit caught dinner and flip my maps over so ready to bang off another 20k um, I've done 20k a little over 20k so far today I also put a big boulder just in the front of my canoe it's sort of being cradled by the spray deck a bit and I can already tell that it's helping a bit it's sort of like uh, it's brought my nose down a bit so that should definitely help me paddle into this headwind although the headwind seems to have died off a bit anyway so hopefully you're in good shape Dance of the cliff dwelling swallow and the rough leg hawk plays its sprawl out in the Yukon once again. Well, it is 7 p.m. and I've done over 40k. Pretty freaking good. I think I might just like push on until 10 or I might just camp in about 5 10k. We'll see. Depends if I can, if I pass like a perfect spot, I might not be able to pass it up. over 60k today which means I have 120k to my pickup spot at the mouth of the Snake River um, which is on the Pia so 
That means as of now, I have 60K to the confluence of the bonnet plume and peel, and then another 60K along the peel to Taco Bar, which is basically at the mouth of the snake where I'm getting picked up. It's a gravel bar and there's enough water there where they can land. Ideally, I would be there the day after tomorrow. An extra day would be perfect. I was supposed to have an extra day, but just because of things outside of my hands, I wasn't able to get to Mayo um, on time. Well, this is home for the night. There's a bit of lumpy, elevated spot there, but nothing great to set up a tent on. So I think I did just about as well as I could do for this stretch of river. Anyways, um, I'm just gonna get my tent set up, uh, change out of these uh, uh, wet socks and dry suit pants, haul my boat up and uh, get those fish um, cooking up on the fire and uh, hopefully try to get to bed before one in the morning so I can get up early and give her tomorrow. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, beautiful evening here, which is great. The weather's on my side. Um, bugs aren't the best, but uh, I guess we're kind of down out of the mountains now, so I might be getting chewed on a little bit more by bugs at the lower elevations. Um, anyways, yeah, time to get at it and uh, get food going, get the tent set up, etc., etc. I've been looking forward to eating this fish for hours. Mmm, absolutely perfectly cooked. Oh, just nailed the grayling today. Perfect size for food amount versus flavor cooked to perfection, not too dry. What a great meal after a long day on the river. All right guys, nighty night, and I'll see you in the morning. Day nine is tomorrow. Well, making a little bit of a faster exit from camp today. You know, I did get to bed at 12.30, but I didn't roll until camp until after nine, so. I have 120 kilometers to do in two days. I'm feeling kind of stressed out about it, but this yummy hot oatmeal is making me feel warm and snuggly inside.
depending on the current and the peel, I might have to uh, forgo my coffee in the morning and just like pound a bunch of like granola bars for breakfast so I can get on the river faster because having to light a fire and boil water and all that in the morning takes a lot of time. I have my uh, Garmin 66i which is uh, an in-reach satellite texting device um, as well as a GPS but one of the things that it does is that it can actually give me a basic weather report for my location which is pretty cool so I woke up and it was overcast so I was thinking oh no it's gonna be pissing rain today as I paddle 60k well it's like 10% chance of rain and then tomorrow's 0% chance of rain followed by 0% chance of rain sun and partially cloudy so it looks like I'm gonna have some beautiful weather stacked up for the rest of this trip and that the other reason that's good is that means I'm not going to get weathered in at uh, my pickup point. They call it taco bar. No one really knows why. Someone was eating a taco there once and it doesn't even look like a taco but it's a place where people uh, where a float plane will pick you up from the wind snake and bonnet plume river so you got to uh, paddle down the peel to a place where a float plane can land but I have 60k on the bonnet plume more than a little more than 60 followed by 60k on the peel so I got my work cut out for me over the next couple days, that's for sure. Well, 120 kilometers, a little more than that actually. And two days to do it in. I busted out my shorter paddle. I can paddle faster with it. Here we go. Will I make it on time? 9.30 in the morning, I got away from camp, not bad. The earliest I ever got out of camp was nine. Finally, we got a little sun and we're just paddling uh, to a little burnt country here. You can see all the fireweed and standing dead burnt trees. A few sweepers here. Paddle, paddle, paddle. Making good time today though, good current, no headwind. So far anyways. tricky navigating in some of these tight bends and these narrow braids. No idea which braid I'm on but there's sweepers and when the current from two different braids meet at opposing angles you get a lot of boils and whirlpools and weird currents and stuff so really you got to be on your toes all the time going through this stuff and as good as the current is it's also so weaving that 60k that's the way the crow flies, so weaving back and forth and back and forth, I wonder how many K I'll really be doing by the end of the day, probably quite a bit more. But if you look at how fast I'm going now, I'm definitely going more than five kilometers an hour. So you can kind of use that as a baseline to judge how many kilometers I'm really going because I'm probably actually moving more like eight to 10 kilometers an hour, which would almost double the distance compared to the way the crow flies because of all these bends and weaves of this braided river, so. Somehow I got myself into a sketch side braid here, tangled log jams and sweepers everywhere.
still just don't know where, where the heck I am on a map in this winding narrow side channel with ripping current, log jams and sweepers everywhere. Um, I hope this doesn't mean I'm traveling way out of my way, however, the current is strong so I'm moving pretty quickly, but it's kind of sketchy. I don't know how the hell I got into this thing. You know, maybe all the channels are just like this, but this is pretty, pretty advanced. keep my eye on the map and have an idea where I am so I can stay with the main channel is a good idea but sometimes it's pretty freaking challenging to have an idea where you are with all these braids and then no real mountains to guide me either. Uh, country's opening up. I can see some mountains in the distance. I bet you they're uh, on the other side or down by the peel. There's kind of a ridge along this side of the river. And I can't see the mountains of the Rankle Range anymore back from whence I came. So I've just dropped down that much in elevation since last time I looked back. Well, that's starting to look more like a, a river. Which branch to stay with, though? something you want to avoid. Oh, whirlpool. Oh, These two braids in the river are just colliding and creating a two and a half foot high boil with ripping whirlpools behind it. Probably would have dumped if I went into that. Gotta be on your toes, man. Gotta be on your toes like a ballerina. Dip, 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 dip. Well, there's a real freaking channel of the river, finally. After being on a bit of a side adventure, trying to make my way back here. Well, a wicked headwind just blew up, spun me backwards. So, I'm just basically front bearing, trying to stay with the main channel. Right out the last few kilometers here, the bonnet plume, and it's still pretty lively. Last one now, there's been currents and oily whirlpools and tight turns and all kinds of challenging grades of swift current. Right to the very end. This is a little backwater eddy here and the water in it is like absolutely crystal clear. The bonnet plume essentially is clear. It's just carrying so much sediment with it um, that as soon as it stops moving, that sediment sinks to the bottom and you, you get this very clear water, unlike some rivers which are inherently muddy with tiny little particles of mud that are gonna remain foggy even when they sit. You can see here that the bonnet plume is quite clear compared to the moving um, part which is more of a gray kind of brown color, but anyways, uh, yeah, I pulled over here again. I am about five kilometers from 
the Peel River. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon. There's a huge fan of braids at the mouth and I'm like way too far to one side than where I want to be. If I come out on the west side of the big fan at the delta of the um, bonnet plume, I'll have quite a bit of a distance to paddle. Uh, I think it's over three kilometers wide than if I'd come out at the east side, but uh, Whatever, what can you do? I'm just basically taking the channel that has the most water in it, and this is sort of where I wound up, so I don't know really if I could have done anything much different. Looking forward to getting her done though. Should be anytime soon now. I'll pull out onto that Peel River. Holy crap. Challenging. Like, look, do I go through there? That looks sketchy as I'm gonna have to try to get through here. Now I'm hung up on the gravel bar. And now there's a huge boil here. channels man. I just want to get to the peel already. Oh man I can almost see it. We're in the final stretches here. Really interesting uh, obstacle course of log jams and sweepers there. Well, I just finished paddling the Bonnet Plume River and am now floating on the Peel. I got another 70 kilometers to go to the mouth of the Snake River to await my float plane charter the day after tomorrow. And I am feeling pretty good. The river challenged me. I was on my toes right into the very end. The scenery was just incredible with rugged mountains, incredible campsites. The rapids were scary, very, very pushy, very challenging rapids and swift current around every corner. Portaging was very hard too, but it took me around some beautiful, beautiful canyons with amazing views. I managed to see a good amount of wildlife, three moose, a caribou, several doll sheep, which are pretty rare to see and I even hiked up a little bit and panned for gold a lot and learned a little bit more about that which was an amazing experience. So I was nervous for sure going into it because I knew it was an advanced level whitewater river and I knew some of the dangers and challenges but now that I'm sitting here finished and floating on the peel it just all makes it that much better of a feeling that I've done it. So awesome awesome river and I'm excited for the rest of my trip here on the peel. I'm supposed to be going through a canyon right now too so um, I'm a little concerned that the current is not as strong on the peel, so I'm not going to make that kind of time, but I'm also uh, not going to be terrified about getting swept into a sweeper at any moment. It's a safer river, wider, and the current's half decent too, so here's hoping I can bang off 60k in the next uh, day and a little. again and uh, it is not manageable unfortunately um, it's blasting uh, it seems to be being channeled by this canyon here on the peel and uh, I literally can't control my boat at all and it's just feeling really sketchy um, so I basically need to try to cross the river and get to shore uh, around this little corner here and see if it makes any of a difference, but I doubt that it will. So I might pull up on this gravel bar and just wait it out. Well, 
I have been wading out the wind here on this random gravel bar. I also put my dry suit on just because uh, I don't see any contour lines crossing the river on the map and I don't see any marked rapids, but there's a lot of volume in this river and it's all being pushed through a tight pinch spot at the head of this canyon. And I do see some current in, in there, and potentially some rapids. Um, I also saw footprints. Um, on the other side of this uh, gravel bar, which looked like someone jumped out and had a look into the canyon. So they might have an idea that there are some rapids there. So the canyon's five kilometers long without anywhere to get out. So if I was to dump at the beginning, let's say there's a rapid that I wasn't expecting, um, I'd have to swim five kilometers. So I definitely want my dry suit on because there's nowhere to get out of the water. If the... Uh wind is too strong as I approach. There's another gravel bar on the left that actually has access to shore and maybe is a little more protected. So I'll just jump over there and camp there for the night. It actually looks like probably not a bad place to camp. making my way along the peel here it's about 10 at night and uh, the peel has been freaking beautiful just canyons almost from the minute I put my bow into its waters um, pretty challenging at first with the headwinds there and uh, trying to run rapids with a blasting headwind was pretty miserable but that wind died down for the most part and it's been pretty smooth sailing and nice current just enjoying every second of it looking up at the uh, cliffs as I paddle beneath them um, getting pretty exhausted though I've been on the water for 12 and a half hours today um, and have done almost 80 kilometers uh, which will give me 40k left to do tomorrow so barring you know, 40k is going to be a full day, but I'm going to be able to do it as long as I don't get a vicious headwind or general terrible weather of some sort or if the current just goes completely slack. So, uh, I'm basically going to just uh, round the next corner here and see if I can find a nice flat gravel bar in the middle. set up and grab a couple more things from the boat and uh, call it a night but this has turned out to be a pretty nice spot after all. It's really pretty too. paddling for 13 and a half hours today got on the water at 9 30 a pretty freaking good time i'm not exactly sure how much i did all in but i think i did 80 kilometers so pretty good current despite the uh 
parts where a tailwind was kind of messing with me pretty big. But uh, yeah, the bonnet plume, man, it didn't want to let up. It kept, I was guided into these small channels and braids and the current was ferocious and like constant action, basically. It was almost like it, the whole thing was like a rapid almost. Still, I'm amazed with how beautiful the peel is. I didn't realize the peel was going to be this dramatic. I didn't really have a very close look at it. I just, you know, thought it was going to be flatter. I didn't know it was going to have these crazy canyons and cliffs and everything like that. Anyways, I'm just going to pull out uh, some smoked um, mussels. I know what you're thinking, Jim, you have enough mussels as it is, but uh, I'm going to eat some smoked mussels and go to bed. Well, this, that's about it for me. I'm going to um, finish these up, wash this tin off in the river, and hike my food barrel safe distance away from camp, and finally go to sleep. Oh, it's going to be so wonderful. Can't wait. I love sleep. Good morning. It is day 10 of this expedition, and it is a very overcast morning. I slept in today and didn't crawl out of the tent till eight because I was absolutely exhausted. I took a little bit of a closer look and realized that I paddled over 90 kilometers yesterday, probably pushing 95, which gives me under 35 roughly to make it to the mouth of the snake, so, um, I'm pretty confident that I will be able to do that barring any gusting headwinds or other acts of God still don't have time to dally but uh, Anyways, yeah, I'm hoping just to enjoy this paddle on the peel today I'll be probably out of this canyon country soon and um, hopefully the current picks up Maybe I'll even see some wildlife and uh, hit a couple uh, rapids. We'll see but um, this morning is basically the same routine. I got to get a fire going because, of course, my stove is still broken. Um, get some water on to boil and uh, get my tent taken down, get packed up and hit the water. So, yeah, first things first, I'm going to grab some wood and uh, get, the, get the pot on. So that's uh, boiling while I'm getting my tent down and um, get moving, get some food in me because I'm already starving. I didn't have a very big dinner last night. kind of nice to have a fire in the morning if only to just uh, burn off your oatmeal packets. I've rationed my coffee and creamer expertly well. Those are the things that take many years of experience. Unless you just bring like a whale load and then that's just done. Advanced level whitewater paddling. <laughs> five years. Rationing your creamer, 20 years. My pickup location is at a place called Taco Bar. It's a gravel bar that nobody really knows why it's called Taco Bar. It doesn't look like a taco. I heard that somebody 
saw someone eating a taco there once and it really stood out as a strange thing to be eating um, in such a place so they uh, called it taco bar could be the case the trip won't technically be over until I'm back out of the wilderness but um, yeah my paddling time will have come to an end uh, by the end of today and then um, I'll have tomorrow morning I'll probably sleep in hard and uh, get up and make a nice breakfast pancakes or bannock or something like that because I have a little more time and just await my pickup so yeah trips coming to an end but it ain't over till the fat lady sings <laughs> I bet you there'd be some fish in there. Uh, I bet you there'd be some. Oh, that looks like a really muddy tributary though, so maybe not. serious little rapido there well that's the mouth of the snake river behind me another awesome river of this peel watershed and uh maybe i'll paddle it next time it's there's some incredible canyons on it and probably just as beautiful as a bonnet plume maybe not as demanding on the white water uh, side of things but uh, a lot of great things about it too and super fun river so yeah just enticing looking at the mouth of it but um, I'm almost done this adventure um, taco bar which is the gravel bar where I, I'm gonna await my float plane pickup is just around the corner across from this big bluff here so I am in the final paddle strokes of this adventure Well, look at that, Alcan is there, the float plane is there. So no doubt this is the spot. Done! How goes it? Not too bad.
One minute it'll come this way and the next minute it'll come this way. And it almost blew my tent away as I was setting it up. I had to grab it. So. butter hasn't even remotely begun to gone bad. I brought it to make bannock with but just haven't had the time. And it's just been cold enough at night and I guess not prolonged hot enough that the butter has kept very well. Getting into a little sleepy time tea. It's gonna get wild here at the taco bar, baby. Get into a little taco. Could use a little more steeping. Great trip, great trip, great day. Uh, what do I do today? Um, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff slept in as usual later than I was supposed to. Um, banged off about 35k, went past the mouse of the snake. And I guess I didn't really do that much, really. I just paddled to here, got out, um, outfitted, unoutfitted my boat, um, got everything ready for the float plane, spray deck off, throw bags out, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's really a beautiful spot here. Probably, this is probably the nicest weather right now that I've seen the entire trip, maybe save for one night. Oh, the air just smells so good, just so relaxing here, guys. And uh, yeah, the peel was uh, was um, just really fun, relatively easy to paddle, and these beautiful cliffs behind me are a really cool backdrop to what's going to be the last campsite of the trip. I want to come back and do another river. Uh, I'd like to paddle the Heart River in the Yukon. I'd like to do the Snake, but maybe I'll wait for a little bit to do that one. Maybe I'll come back and do the Heart, the Firth. I could also do uh, the Hess again and start higher up. <sighs> the Wind is a good one that I might do later on in life or with the kids when they're a bit older. So yeah, there's just like so many adventures to do in the Yukon here guys it's just epic I, I don't know I'm sure I'm gonna be back again but <sighs> just um, enjoying just being here and not being at all rushed um, and just smelling the air and uh, taking it all in another trip accomplished and the bonnet plume is definitely one of the best rivers I've ever paddled. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think I liked it 
I mean, I, when I did the Mountain River, I had Tori and Ted and my sister-in-law Heather there. So Ted's my brother, so that made it more fun. But uh, I don't know, man. I feel like the bonnet plume. We, we had relatively low water, but overall, I feel like the bonnet plume is like pretty hard to beat. Pretty hard up there with, you know, one of my favorite. We'll call it top three top three rivers of all time for sure so anyways uh yeah i'm just going to um finish my tea try not to get too wild after i finish this sleepy time tea <sighs> just take some nice deep breaths of that incredible yukon air and uh crawl into the tent and go to bed i'm tired I can't wait to have a good sleep and be able to sleep in pretty much as long as I want to tomorrow. So I'm excited about that. Well, good morning. Um, it is an absolutely beautiful day, easily one of the nicest uh, mornings of the entire trip. And um, I slept in today, which was electrifyingly wonderful. So I uh, just got the fire going here, got some uh, water on to boil. Probably gonna do some pancakes with my homemade maple syrup this morning. And uh, there is another group of paddlers here with six people. They came with um, inflatable SORs down the Snake River, which is another river um, of the uh, Peel River watershed and has the same pickup location. So they're waiting for a float plane today. So yeah, basically um, there might be room in the Cessna caravan uh, for me to join this other group. Um, and that way I'll get out of here earlier and, uh, yeah, there'll be, I guess, one less, uh, float plane charter for them to do. If not, uh, I'll wait, um, and get picked up in the de Havilland Beaver, um, which is a smaller plane. So I've never been on a Cessna caravan before, um, so it'd be kind of cool and, um, interesting talking to this other group of people. They're Yukoners from Whitehorse and they've, uh, paddled uh, several of these rivers here because you know it's in their own backyard not the most accessible backyard but uh, it is in their backyard so they have a lot of experience paddling some of these rivers and uh, had a great trip so we neat flying out with them and uh, should be a beautiful flight out regardless what plane I take so that's pretty cool uh, so we'll see I'm gonna get ready if I can fit on the caravan if they can fit me they can fit me it's not gonna be a weight issue more of a, a bulk of how many bags I have and, and the size of me for example because I'm a pretty big dude and if they can fit me they fit me if not uh, I'll wait for the beaver so that's the plan like I'm gonna be able to catch a ride out with this other group of folks that were paddling the snake so I'm gonna get out of here a bit early but uh, man perfect day I wouldn't mind sticking around for another night but uh, you know what it'll be a, a fun flight out of here so about to hop on the plane and uh, fly out over the mountains back to Mayo. 